लव मैरिनर्स होप यू गाइज आर डूइंग वेल सो वेल इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट ए आई एस इट्स वर्किंग प्रिंसिपल इट्स रिक्वायरमेंट एंड ऑल्सो हाउ डज इट वर्क एंड वाट काइंड ऑफ इक्विपमेंट इज दिस सो वेल लेट्स बिगिन इथ वाई वी बिगिन विथ इट वाई वी रिक्वायर ए आई एस सो ए आई एस ए आई एस मीन्स इट्स अ ऑटोमॅटिक आयडेंटिफिकेशन सिस्टम so what does it means automatic identification system so this is a basically in other way suppose we can say that uh, when we are in a open sea or we are doing a coast coasting coastal navigation at that time uh, might be some other vessel uh, is we i would that we are going to be that is our cp is very less and uh, in fact there is a lot of vessel and at that certain time we are unable to identify that vessel and we just can't use a vhf and simply call that a vessel on my port side a vessel on my starboard side that is a very difficult thing because the other vessel does not know that which vessel is calling so for that we need something that at least we can accurate call that vessel by its name by its call sign or anyway so eis is a equipment that gives us such detail so it is a, it is also we can also says ais can be used as a collision avoidance too so well, let's uh, talk about the detail of ais so uh, ais is a ship board it's a transponder ais is a transponder which transmit ship name ship position ship call sign next port of call ship course heading rate of turn and uh, rate of drift and in fact also we put it up that what kind of cargo we are carrying and what is our next port and what is the last port we used to put this all things on our ais so ais are used in lots of way that is first of all ais is used as ship to ship transmission also ais is used as a ship to shore transmission short to ship transmission these are just these things are just that we are giving our data to other ship that is ship to ship transmission means we are giving such such data to the other ship that he can call me at any situation like i am troubling something or maybe i am doing some wrong things so for that he can call me or act for action avoidance it is very useful for him or for me too that i can call him and say that that is motor tanker this 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 uh, please be careful please alter course to ye you are not taking this action so this is a very useful thing in you know, modern navigation sure for that uh, we need to pass our information to the source and also we collect the information from the so this is uh, used in an open sea where there there are some danger in open sea there is some danger and we cannot bypass that danger and in fact there is we can't install something to certain area due to its depth like we cannot put any ila system marking so for that we put an ais that is known as a pseudo ais it's, there is nothing is there but we just put an ais and that transmit something that you all have seen in the radar that how it's transmit up and from that we can come to that there is something hazard or there is something that we need to avoid that area now let's talk about its ais communication scheme so ais message are to be transmitted with a very very small time like in, we used to transmit it every second so that none of the things can changes like for we need to transmit it every second for example uh, that is our course course made good speed made good did this may changes so at every second of the time we need need to send so this this transmission of the data takes place with the help of a self organized time division multiple ss with a unique thing that is by the gps method with the help of a gps satellite system so i will show you with a block diagram that how this stdma works it has a slots that is stdma that is self organized time multiple data access so well see it uh, so well uh, mariners so it's ship broadcast its ais message and receives message from 
all SIPs within the VHF radio ranges. Okay. So now the area in which AIS message can be received is called as a SIP cell. So each cell in this way is the center of its own communication skill. Now the practicable size of cell can be varies according to the traffic density on the AIS channel. If the number of the AIS channels begins to overload the network, the SIP AIS system can automatically shrinks its cell by ignoring the weaker station further away in the favor of a nearby. So this is a concept uh, that is also used on a radar that on the ARPA system that a closer target is acquired and which are farther in a very uh, dense traffic and which targets away that is not useful for us that target is already rejected. So the same AIS also does the same things by weakening her uh, cell so that they can uh, ignore the further targets. Now. Under the STDMA protocol, STDMA that is a self-organized time division multiple SS protocol. Now, each time of is divided into 2 to 5 0. So, this is the entire time slot. Okay. And this entire time slot is divided into 2 to 5 0 time slot giving it time duration of 26.67 millisecond to each slot and i am talking about each slot means this is the one of the each one each one slot and it has a it this one cell is transmitted that is the duration what it takes is 26.67 millisecond millisecond that is even less than a second it's taking a time to send it now after that what it does its slot now one slot that is this one slot contains of 256 bits data this is the amount of a data which one slots carried okay now the rate of a transmission is 9600 bit per second so you can normally calculate it how much it's sending for per second so now this is this this transmission is as per the requirement of the international telecommunication union now that is time slots can be so says that they are decided now as as from the figure it, it's it's nothing it's just a simple cell that this is a uh, in other way we can called as a frequency please don't get confused between the frequency and this slot i just for explanation purpose i'm using the word frequency as we know that the frequency have some wavelength up and down and that much is the distance we calculate that it is a wavelength so it is same so this is the total time slot and one time slot and that is one cell is known as and this is a 267 bytes of a data is stored in that and that cell is transmitted into 26.67 milliseconds so for the for one second how much data is transmitted that depends so that is calculated with that help of bits so per second the data is that is uh, transferred is 9600 that is the it's uh, stdma how it's uh, working on it so these are the things that uh, how it's work now now some something is that the the key to the stdma scheme is available on a higher accurate standard with time reference because very time accuracy of the time is uh, very important in this operation for the ais to which all of the station synchronize their time slot and it is uh, every every time slot is synchronized this is also a uh, here if if time is not synchronized if each and each if each cell is not synchronized then then a overlapping may takes place so to avoid that overlap a very accurate uh, time slot is assigned for each and each cell so this time reference is also supplied by the precise timing signal in the gps satellite missiles thus the gps plays a critical role in ais so providing the universal time reference as a well as position data for itself hope it is clear to you guys so now let's talk about the working of a ais so each each ai system consists of one vhf two vhf with stdma and one vhf dsc receiver and a standard marine communication link and also with a GPS that is global positioning system or DG uh, sorry DG uh, D GPS that is differential global positioning system and also for the other tire that is GNSS receivers are also installed in this and so with this all things that it's what it's transmitted is I'd already discussed receive position course speed 
and also rate of turn angle heel trim eta and lots of other things are to be transmitted every, every second so while operating in a open sea or a coastal inland water the eis transmit uses is 9 9.6 kb fm modulation over 25 or 12.5 kilohertz so channel using is hdlc packet protocol although only one radio channel is necessary so each station transmit and receive over two radio channels uh, to avoid interference problem and to allow the channel to satisfy without a communication loss from other the system provides for automatic condensation resolution between itself and other station and communication integrity is maintained even in the loaded condition so i don't think these things i need to uh, explain because we need to just read it as what it is it's a it's a working principle that the data we have to remember only now each station determines its one uh, own transmission schedule that is slot data what i had discussed that is stdma and so and data link traffic history and knowledge of a further action by the other station so a position report for one ai station fits into one of the 2 to 5 0 time slot so established at every 60 second so these are the normal thing i don't need to recall um, means word by word i need to say it. so let's begin with the further point so the one of the common things which most of the in fact in the oral and also in the written we need to put this frequency as frequency it has a very weightage so the ais frequency we we have two ais on the whole uh, ship so ais one that is uh, frequency is used is 87 uh, channel is 87b with a frequency of 161 decimal 975 megahertz and for the ais2 we use a frequency of 162 decimal 025 megahertz that is channel 88b or in other uh, to remember this frequency it's very simple just remember one frequency 162 and just add plus minus 0.25 we'll get the both frequencies so well now ais message so ais message which we are transmitting ais is transmitting at every time so there are total three type of messages that all messages are divided into a three type that is static sorry that is of four type that is of static dynamic voice related and safety related message now the static data so this information is programmed to the system at the time of concerning the system and basically consists of the following so static data is static as from the name only it is cleared so this are the data which is fixed it is already put in the ais at the time of installation in a other way we can say that as the things are which are put is imo number call sign and ship name length beam which are not going to be changed type of ship is not going to be changed and location of a position fix antenna of the ship now the other type is of a dynamic type so dynamic this information is derived by the interfering ship gps and other equipment with the help of a sensor and mainly consists of the following so dynamic from the name only dynamic means which is changing so these are the things uh, which uh, the gps is takes this information uh, sorry the ais takes this information from the other of the equipment and also from the gps system like ship position according to the wg S eighty four, time in UTC, course over ground, course uh, over ground, speed over ground, heading, navigation, status, rate of turn, angle of land, so on. And the other thing is voice related data. Voice related. So the <laughs> voice related data. Voice related data from the name only, it is clear that it is related to the voice. So before beginning of the voice, the master has to update. Not the master in the command of a master, the <clears throat> officer has to update this data that is like. Uh, destination eta and port of call and how much time we are going to reach and safety related data means that uh, that that uh, safety related data safety related data means the data which are put uh, like uh, iceberg conditions if there is any iceberg in a such a condition that are the safety related data we, from the name only it is clear what is safety related data so now the static and voice related data are transmitted every 6 second and when amended or frequent for instance and also safety messages are sent as needed the update rates for a dynamic information will depends upon the ship status and the ship according to the following so when the vessel is at anchor 
the AI is transmitted or updated its data at every three minutes. When doing a speed of 0 to 40 knot at every 12 second, <clears throat> when doing 0 to 40 knot and with a changing course, then at 4 second, 14 to 23 knot at 6 second, and 14 to 23 knot and changing course that is at 2 second. 23 knots in 3 second and 23 knots and changing course into 2 seconds. These are the time interval that AIS will update or the other way we can say that this is a requirement the AIS should update its data as if we are doing a such courses or the speed. So pseudo AIS already I had discussed what is pseudo AIS like there is nothing and we just uh, put a virtual AIS and that emits uh, data and information that is a pseudo AIS. Now the inheritance limitation of AIS. What are the limitation of AIS? So first of all in always limitation we used to say that the OOW should not rely on AIS because the as I had uh, said you that there are the lots of data that which we need to manually put and if in a certain time by mistake we are human being and we we are made to do mistakes so by mistake if we put something else data or by the own point of view that we really want uh, by some there are some certain condition that at that time we really put uh, wrong data in the AIS while transiting Somalia Somalia area or the Nigeria intentionally we put some of the data wrong so we should not the officer should not rely 100% on EIS should not used as a one of the vital equipment for collision evidence and user must be aware of the norm information enormous information and systems. now uh, after that uh, if no if like some sensor is not working from the GPS or the other equipment then the, the IS will give a wrong information and the also should be poorly configured or calibered SIP sensor same thing now ease of AIS nothing much to explain mm, uh, in fact the AIS is uh, as per the class A class B and this is divided into such things that that things are not not much deeply we need to learn let's let's talk about the SOLAS requirement what SOLAS says about the AIS so in SOLAS 2000 amendment chapter 5 regulation 19 2.4 IMO has laid down a schedule and made a carriage of a AIS mandatory so AIS is mandatory new ship above so for whom this uh, requirement is mandatory for whose ship this has to be carried that is for a ship of above 300 GRT constructed on or after 1st July 2002 and engaged on an international voyage shall have the AIS fitted with a immediate effect and on existing ship so means uh, the ship which are already in the market ship has AIS to be fitted in a phased manner on that by the December 31st 2004 all ship engaged on international voyage above Vitna GRT will have AIS and for a ship which are not engaged on international voyage only those above a 500 GT need to have AIS equipment fitted on a board AIS latest by 1st July 2008 irrespective of size and trade or passenger ship cell must, must be fitted with the AIS by 1st June 2003. Hope it's clear to you guys. Thank you and Jai Hind.